but I, you know, it, like things you, you just, and I know we talked about this during episode, your, your 200th uh, episode as well. Like you just can't pull anything off the shelf anymore and, and really have any kind of expectation, not only of privacy, but also of security. And so things at the time, I want to say, you know, in 2019, I was kind of feeling like, well, you know, is this run its course? Like, is the message just like lost? The tech war is lost. It's over. Um, and so I was, I was kind of thinking of, 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 you know, sovereign tech kind of dropping off of the map, but really then, you know, COVID did occur and it's, it, it came pretty apparent that, oh no, we've, you know, <laughs> podcasts, liberty oriented podcasts need to keep going and need to be out there, uh, you know, to help get either a, some truth or some actionable, you know, solutions, items, uh, out there for people, you know, during that time. Um, not that I feel any better. Uh, about the direction that that tech is going. And really, I feel like we've essentially, at least in America, we've essentially lost control of like even our options on tech, um, the direction that things are going. Like like the market cannot speak right now. I mean, I mean they're, you know, it's, it's essentially, you know, it's Samsung, it's Google, it's Apple, it's whoever, you know, offering crap sandwich A and crap sandwich B. You know, that, that's, those, are, those are your choices. Um, so, you know, it's definitely a time for a lot of independent work to be done. And like, you're talking about the ghost phone, certainly that's part of that. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into some other things, but, uh, yeah, so sovereign tech has definitely taken a turn towards, okay, here's, you know, the best of what to use now. There's not a whole lot, in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of point in, I mean, something I used to do a lot would be covering, okay, what are the, what are the tech giants doing today? You know, and you can still get into that. It's still important to get that information out there. Um, but really, you know, what they're doing, you have no say in which direction they want things to go. Um, and in a lot of cases, you don't even really have like, again, like I was saying earlier, you don't have a choice on what technology uh, you want to even take advantage of. For for example, and I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later too, mm -hmm. uh, like my, the smartphone I have right now is a spy phone, as you so aptly called them. Um, it's, a, it's a Google Pixel 6. Now, when I first got this, this is a totally new phone. When I first got this in November of 2021, um, I could set it to where it would just use 4G. As of its most recent update, now you essentially are forced with the stock software to use 5G. They don't even give you the option anymore, even though all the radios are there and everything's there for you to take advantage of 4G. And for months I did, I had it set for that. And for good reasons, I mean, don't even have to get into health concerns around 5G. It's just a matter of saving battery and all these other things. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the thing, or that, that kind of just elucidates the point is that you are losing so much control. Now, I mean, I can reinstall, you know, a different uh, ROM, you know, or operating system onto that phone, and that's likely going to happen. Um, but just to prove the point that off the shelf, you just don't have control, you know, the technology that you're using. And so a lot of sovereign techs take in the past year, year and a half has been around concentrating on technologies where you absolutely do have control and stepping far more out of the consumer space, which is what I think made the show popular for many years. Um, but again, that, that consumer space is just essentially lost and just, you know, the best suggestion is to just walk away from that. But yeah, so that, I guess that's a, that's a, a somewhat short version of, of where Sovereign Tech is at right now. Sure. And I, I, I appreciate that. And that's that's kind of um, the what I've noticed, especially over the past couple of years with, I guess, I, I've doubled down on research into like health and a lot of other subjects, too. But you can't really use mm -hmm. speaking in, in, in that same sort of um, speaking towards that same thing. You can't really do a lot of research on the Internet anymore, like with with search engines. It's just gotten a lot harder. So you're talking about right. the importance of Liberty podcasts and podcasts in general. I mean, that's a really hard um, avenue to censor, right? Like, um, I, RSS yeah. feeds. So like, I think it's critically important. Um, the podcasting in general, I, I had Daryl Becker on back in 20, I guess it would have been like mid 2020 when, uh, um, I guess, uh, Google was entering into the pharmaceutical space and, uh, they were, you know, obviously yeah. doing their, dis they were, you know, obviously any, any narratives outside of what they, of what they want to promote monetarily for financial reasons or otherwise mm -hmm. are off the platform. So I, I kind of had the, the realization with him or I was kind of talking through it at that point. Like if regardless of what the truth is, you know, like the regardless of what the truth is, like the only thing that's going to be available to like most of the mainstream, you know, main of the mainstream folks is going to be like one thing. Um, so yeah, like I think keeping, mm -hmm. um, keeping, you know, whether it's, you know, the truth or the Liberty stuff out there is great. And then as you're talking about with the tech, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, um, you know, like the, the de-googled Google Pixel, 
um, is like what the what you have to work yeah. with now. So like, there's not yeah, there's there's definitely not a lot, a lot not a whole lot of options in the tech. I mean, everything is going towards kind of that homogenous that homogenization, where everyone has you know the, mm-hmm. the, the same thing. So um, I, I I definitely definitely share that sentiment. And uh, you know, despite um, you know, despite you know your your kind of negative outlook, and I, and I, I understand I'm right there with you. I, I start of 2020, I kind of you know took a little tech sabbatical, and I was going maybe back into the primitive areas too. Like I kind of had a, a visceral reaction. Sure. But so I'm back into it now, obviously. But I I took I took a step back because um, it just kind of seemed like the, the digital realm, the tech world, was kind of was kind of uh, uh, lost. But um, the on a more optimistic stance. Um, I'm very pleased, you know, after taking a step back for a while, I did, I tried out, you know, like Jitsi, we're on Jitsi right now. I tried out their, um, their app back in 2015 and it required like a bunch of manual steps to get things going. And, and, uh, a lot of the stuff that I was trying out then was super, like it was task. Like it was something I had to like want to do to like practice or, you know, to like, to, to, to experiment. But, uh, thankfully, you know, now, like it mm-hmm. seems like the open source space has progressed a lot. Um, so much to the point that we're talking about the ghost phones. I have, uh, you know, like little experience with, well, actually zero experience with Android and uh, zero and very little experience with Linux outside of, um, I guess, uh, Linux Tails bootable flash drive and um, also the, the ghost pad that's uh, right. one of Jamin's ghost pads that I have. Um, but, you know, like you pick up this, this uh, the ghost phone with Calyx OS on it, it just fucking works. Like it's crazy. Um, no, no issues yeah. so far. The, the freedom beyond like the Apple, uh, the Apple App Store is amazing. Um, the fact that it tells you like before you download anything, it tells you like any privacy concerns that are with the app, um, like all that. It's 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 incredible. Um, it's it's definitely incredible. And uh, um, to have all of my all of my network traffic routed through um, VPN and Tor is just 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 incredible. And it doesn't take any setup. It just it's always on. Just you set it up that way, and it's always on. Um, so yes, I yeah I, yeah. yeah. I mean, certainly. And go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Man. Oh, um, so yeah, certainly something that occurred. Uh, you know, since actually the last, the last, last time I was on Fanu podcast, um, I mean, ac- in fact, uh, interestingly, it was my, it was Sovereign Tech's episode 200. So this is a, you know, a few years ago, um, where I essentially declared like, look, open source has won. Like it's over closed source is effectively dead. Like, yeah, there's people who are still going to, you know, uh, develop within that kind of, um, you know, mentality, but open source has really won the day. And it still has. And that that's like the one really hopeful aspect with, with tech. Um, the thing is, it's it hasn't won because people necessarily have like this ethos of, yes, I want everything to be open source so I can check my own code. It more won because the system, the legacy system, like needs it. It has to operate at that scale. It has to operate where so many people can, can contribute to it. Like, I mean, it's just a necessity, which is still ultimately a good thing. Um, but you know, the issue, so open source has one, but the issue is, and things are getting better, kind of like ghost phone, like you're talking about, uh, is there's a bit of a learning curve, you know, to using certain open source software. Some things it's, you know, easy as pie to take advantage of. Um, but that, that learning curve, you know, is still kind of there, but even that I think we're closing in on a bit, uh, and really it just comes down more to, you know, people just got to learn to get off of Facebook, you know, or, or get off of, you know, what, whatever, uh, I don't know, whatever network, you know, that, that they're thinking of, but that, that, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, and so I guess the, um, yeah. And, and I guess there, there's kind of the necessity aspect too. Like it, it does kind of require the, uh, yeah, the the ease the, the user friendliness is a, is is a is a great first step, and then mm-hmm. I, I don't know for me it was kind of um, I've been taking I've been taking steps out of the first realm, um, the Serval Society for for a number of years, and five years ago it would have been pointless for me to try to um, like that I I really didn't have that much privacy or privacy back then, and I knew if I was using a spy phone I knew what was sure. I knew there was no privacy there, but uh, um, I was going to I was going to just go without a without a spy phone, and then Jamin came out with these, or just go without a smartphone in general for for some time. But he came out with these ghost phones, mm-hmm. and I got one that was you know it's my it's my my ghost phone. There's no no Google services on there, no nothing, obviously. Um, right. And I, I had this 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 new idea, like I, I have to keep I have a phone number associated with Telegram, and also Signal, and you know other ones, which unfortunately that's just that's gonna be mm-hmm. that's gonna be with me now. Um, and I was just gonna keep like a shitty old I- iPhone, like just the number in use just for that for that sake. And I was, you know, I had the thought, like, if I'm gonna have, if I have to have, 
one of these effing things with me, like it might as well be the most secure thing that I <laughs> that I possibly could have, right? Um, yeah. So I got I, I got I got a second yeah, one. Absolutely. So I've got my 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 black phone and my white phone. And uh, the white phone one, like, you know, I still yeah. like to get on Twitter. Like, I'm sorry. Like, if I'm out and about, I like to get on Twitter. Um, <laughs> it's my, it's the only, it's the only, like, I guess, uh, centralized social media I'm on now. But, um, like, I'm obviously not going to install that sure. on, on my, on my ghost phone. But um, regardless. Yeah. Um, regardless. Um, yeah. It, it, it takes, uh, you know, the user friendliness was a great step. And then really it's just got to, um, I think. Yeah, for me, it was more so just try, trying to bring all of my actions in line with my principles. And obviously, being on coercive platforms is not in line with my principles. So um, it kind of took that that little yeah. that little push too. Um, but you know, I, I I sell some of these I sell these ghost phones for jamming on the LUA site, and there's a demand for them now. Um, there's definitely I, there's there's definitely an increased right. demand in in these things now. So I think it's no no better time. Yeah, you know what else is, and, and I'm glad you you brought this up. Um, so something or where there is a sea change, where there is a mentality change and a good one, because um, it was something that I've been purporting for ever. Um, and that it, like Telegram, you mentioned, um, I mean, people can, you know, bring up their arguments around its encryption scheme and all that and whatever, you know, that that's at this point, it's inconsequential, but or at least for the argument, it's inconsequential. Um, the thing I love about it is last year, you know, Telegram finally came out and said, hey, you know, if you get our app from either the iOS app store or the Google Play store, like they're they're censoring what you can see. And so we'll make a version available that you can download on Android, you know, uh, you know for free, because it's always been for free. Um, but you can download it. You can download it independently. It won't run into that censorship issue. And we're actually going to give you like advanced features um, if you use the independent APK, if you use the independent installer. Oh, wow. And I just thought, wow, I mean... Like the getting away from app stores, because there's where you just, I mean, in how many apps, especially social media apps for whatever group, whether you agree with them or not, uh, you know, are getting shut down like all the time, um, you know, to get this idea of installing your own software again without an app store, um, that that's a huge boon in, in at least reclaiming some control of the data you can receive, perhaps not so much what you can send out, but at least what you can receive. Um, yeah, I, I love that that that's happened uh, in in the past year. That that's a that's a great direction for things to go, and even like Twitter, like Twitter, you can easily access. You don't have to install the app. You can just load the mobile website on a you know on a browser, right? So, you know, there's there's option. You don't. I mean, this is this is a point I've been bringing up a lot in the past year on Sovereign Tech. Um, you should really consider every app not to be software, but to actually be an attack vector. Like right. the more apps you have. And the more, especially the more accounts you have, the more attack vectors there are on you. And so if you don't have to install these things or you don't have to have accounts or whatever, like by all means, do not. Um, mm -hmm. If you do have to install them, Telegram's direction is the way to go. But if you can help it, yeah, maybe just run it through a web browser. So. The intent of the Ghostpad is to offer a complete security and privacy hardened computer system that is built from the ground up to be an effective direct action countermeasure for those who want to actively resist the privacy intrusions of the, the entire surveillance state Hydra, both public sector and private sector. A user-friendly computer that the owner maintains exclusive control over every aspect of its operation and has complete control over who accesses what data. A ghost pad is your virtual corner of the room where the cameras, microphones, and other data collection devices have no power. After all, power comes from ownership, which is exclusive control. Unlike practically any other available option, when you buy a ghost pad you are truly its owner. And while the masses beg and bleed to their political corporate masters to loosen their chains, ghost pad owners can use their systems as virtual bolt cutters and cut themselves free. Ghost pads are high quality business rugged laptops that have had the security compromising system firmware, BIOS firmware, Intel management engine, etc., removed and replaced with more secure, free and open source alternatives. The closed source binary BIOS firmware has been removed from the system board and replaced with free, as in freedom, alternatives as well as the Intel management engine also being neutralized. That combination makes them more secure by design and preemptively thwarts any attempts by threat actors, both public and private, to gain access by exploiting its vulnerabilities, either by an engineered in and hidden backdoor or a zero-day exploit in the factory, supplied firmware or the Intel management engine. 
Perhaps the most important security privacy enhancing feature these systems have is the neutralizing of the aforementioned Intel management engine, IM. The IM is a separate computer and a computer that is embedded into all Intel platforms made since 2008. It has its own operating system called Minix. It operates out of band meaning that your primary CPU has no access to monitor what it is doing, and it has direct access to all the hardware that your primary CPU does, making it the ultimate embedded spying device. If you can't audit what it's doing, it's always on when the computer is plugged in, or has battery power, it has its own network interface with its own MAC address that can bypass any system firewall configuration, it has its own storage you have no access to, it can access your microphone, camera, keyboard, can record keystrokes, and display, can screenshot your encrypted communications, while you are reading and writing them. The IM can only be disabled, by modifying the system's firmware. That can only be accomplished by using an external programmer to reprogram the chip that stores the system's firmware. Only select laptop models can be modified. We concentrate on the compatible models with the highest performance available. We offer models that are 2x as powerful as any configuration sold and supported by Lenovo. Transitioning your computing activity to privacy-hardened platforms is a direct action strategy to resist the attempts at total omnipresence by the surveillance state. To put it simply, these systems are some of the few available that are likely compromised in some way on the firmware level, so they are some of the most secure and private available for use cases where that those attributes are the most important. It is also why systems configured this way are considered as ideal to use as a base to install a security privacy hardened OS, such as Cubes OS, Parrot OS, or other privacy focused Linux distributions. On. To view the full selection of ghost pads, ghost phones, and other privacy tools available via Liberty under attack publications, just visit libertinderattack.com forward slash privacy tools. What are you waiting for? Step up your security culture today. Again, libertinderattack.com forward slash privacy tools. Liberty under attack publications, share your story, find your freedom.